I'm John. I'm Simeon. And welcome to. And today we're working on the Lily of the Valley by picking them lightly. So I've decided to do three beds started. Um, we're going to do these middle three beds, and one of the reasons why is this first six beds, the first half that's beside the shop here, starts faster. In fact, when they first come up, you'll actually notice that the first five feet come up a lot faster, and it's because of this wall. This wall, um, the sun comes down, beats on it, it gets warm and retains a little bit of that heat, and actually keeps this area slowly warmer than the back section. Um, it's not much, but it, it's enough to make a difference. So we're going to do three beds. We're going to cover them up. They're going to get started growing. And even once we start to harvest them, uh, we'll notice that the first half of the bed will harvest first before the second half of the bed, which again, just helps us to break the crop up. Today's freezing cold outside. It's like minus eight, but with that bit of sunshine coming in, it is beautiful in here. In fact, the kids are out running around in their t-shirts. It's got to be 20 to 25 degrees. And uh, that's really what's going to start to heat the soil, heat all of the lily of the valley. That mix with the water is really going to start to trick the plants into thinking it's springtime. So what I'm going to do is this third bed is I'm going to build my little rinkety dinkety um, frame out of out of two by fours, and then I'm going to string some poly line across. And all that poly line is doing is just holding up the tarp so the tarp isn't sitting on the bed itself, and then therefore not sitting on the plant itself. By the time the lily of the valley grow high enough where the tarp would be an issue, the tarp will be coming off anyways. So, got our first metal spaceship looking thing. Essentially what this is, this is uh, some used um, shading cloth that we got from uh, somewhere my brother was working, he took it out. And it works great, it, it keeps in air, it keeps in all of the, uh, the light so that it stays nice and dark in there so the plants can really germinate and start to push and try to get taller. So what I'm going to do is I've got one more piece I'm going to lay out here and then I have to cut one for the third bed. So this is still a bit of an experiment. Last year we did this and we put this on and it, it showed some pretty good results. We got to see a bunch of Lily of the Valley grow taller than we might have seen otherwise. But we did double layer. So the second bed here has two layers of cloth. Um, same as if you were putting a blackout curtain inside of a greenhouse. There's a reflective layer on the top and and your second layer is black. Um, and then I'm gonna do the third bed with just the black layer. So this one's got two, this will have one, and that'll have one black layer. And we're gonna try to see how they turn out. If we can see the noticeable difference that one is further developed, one is taller. Did one of them keep them warmer? That sort of stuff. How is this a Could I actually light up with the Again. The hose. What's the hose? Calvin doesn't have a shirt on because he was accidentally sprayed with the hose. Yeah. So our Lily of the Valley are just starting to pip up here and there. So are some of the weeds. So what I'm going to do is uh, give these beds a nice water and then close them in. So we've been watering the Lily of the Valley a lot, um, specifically with the grow hoses. And now we're just trying to give it a bit of a top water, really soak that uh, manure, that compost, make sure everything's nice and wet and then close it up.
in the water first. Mm-hmm, it's a feather. This year. This year. So I gotta pull this cover back for a couple hours, give these plants a chance to get some sunlight. If we only cover them, they'll stay white and they need the sunlight to get the pigmentation. Um, the other thing too is if we all of a sudden went from zero sunlight to full sunlight, they'd probably get burnt. So one of the risks of using dirt or mulch or something that isn't coming from like a uh, supplier, it isn't controlled. So in our case, we use mushroom compost. We got it at an awesome price. Um, the problem is, is we're starting to find weed seed in there. And that again is just part of what happens. You get to save money on your soil, but you may pay for it with some weed seed. In our case, it's periodic. One bed is really heavy and the next bed has nothing. So take a, take a look. See, so in between all the lily of the valley here, you see all of the uh, small stuff. These are all weeds. This bed is, they come out super easy, but this bed is particularly bad. Um, we look at the next bed, and I don't really see many. So we'll have to sort of watch and see. You know, in the following bed, I don't see many, but further on down, I've seen some. Uh, you can also see the lily of the valley here. We've got our covers off. And there is a dramatic difference in height. These lily of the valley are maybe five, six inches for the leaves, um, but they're a nice dark green. These guys are much taller. I would say probably 10 inches, um, but they're still greening up. So we took the covers off because it was a nice overcast day today and hopefully that'll uh, slowly start to give them some pigment, not shock them and not burn them. But these three beds are definitely taller. So the Lily of the Valley definitely stretched um, the ones that were covered. They've gotten a lot taller. They look like they have a bit of a jump start. Yeah. They're looking good, hey Nate? Yeah. Yes, the Lily of the Valley have been growing and uh, they're just at the point where we can start to pick them. This is our first pick. It is, I think, April 12th, 11th today, so that's pretty awesome. Um, we've got a couple pails ordered for later this week, so we're going to pick a whole bunch, talk a little bit about the lily of the valley, and uh, try to bunch them up and, and put them in pails. Maybe mom will help us with that. Sound good? Yeah. First ones we pick are usually on the shorter side. They're not quite as tall. They continue to grow and lengthen, so the faster ones bloom quickly, but they're usually a little bit shorter. Um, we try to mix the bunch so that we have some longer stems, some shorter stems, try to get something that's a little bit nice and fairly even. Our experiment did not go well. Uh, we put different layers of tarps over the beds, and this bed right here that I'm picking out of, though we got nice long stems, about double the length of the other ones, we had, they, they stayed really white, and we tried to slowly give them light. But uh, at the end, we had to pull the carp off, hoping that they would green up and start to bloom. But they burnt. Uh, so a whole bunch of the blooms on the top of these ones are totally burnt. I don't know if we're going to be able to salvage maybe half of the bed. Um, unfortunately, that was that's part of the experiment. The cloths, the beds that had single layer cloths, did much better. Um, the one that had the reflective only did the best because it let a little bit of light in. So they were able to grow taller and not get such heat and burnt gives us some intel to work with gives us something to uh, look at and try to figure out for future years and it looks like the rest of the family's coming so our lily of the valley are not in peak production what i mean by that is is the beds aren't crazy full um, we're not at the point where we're thinning them yet we're getting a decent amount of blooms but not a ton and i think part of that is just we've we've mistreated them a bit they haven't had the optimal growing conditions. We haven't had this window open, so it gets way too hot in here in the summertime. Watering is always a challenge to try to stay on top of. Uh, in addition to that, shading. We don't have a shading system. Same thing with pest management. Um, it's, it's a 
challenge trying to stay on top of it all. We're getting better. We're making improvements. So the goal is this year to really baby the lily of the valley, allow them to put a lot of energy into their root stock. And that so next year they'll be a little thicker and we'll be able to pick more and continue to grow and expand. And pick and pick weeds. That's something I can help with and my brothers. I remember once when I was young in my old house, we had this big barn full of lily of the valley. I always went with my dad to see check on the lily of the valley. And it was almost like this barn, but slightly different. It wasn't as big. Hey, Jules. I'm going to clean this up. Okay. And I'm going to put the camera on Mom because she's starting to bunch them. All right. Okay. So... To bunch the lily of the valley to sell them, I start with three medium-sized leaves. And then my method is to grab two stems at a time and just arrange them in the leaves. To make a nice looking little bunch. I have 10 stems in each bunch. And once I've added the stems, I just try to grab a few smaller leaves and I just put them around the outside of the bunch just to cover up the stems and make the bunch look a little bit fuller. And once I've done that, and it's finished, so I just gently put an elastic around the outside. Keyword being gently because these stems are really fragile. And I just keep doing that until I have 10 bunches, which will give me 100 stems, which is how many go in each bucket. I'm finished, I just count to make sure that I have 10 bunches. It's hard to do when I'm talking. Eight, nine, ten. And I get 10 bunches. I'm gonna line up the bases of the bunches, make sure they're all gonna go in the water, and then we're done. Okay, go play with your sister. Right there? Right there, yeah. Okay, so when I'm done bunching up all of the stems that are long enough for selling, I will take the short ones and bunch them up. And I'll just bunch them up with some like short little leaves and I'll just make a little nice little bunch uh, to bring into the house and then we'll just enjoy them. Yeah. There's a nice little bunch to enjoy in the house. Okay.